Hi guys, uh, this is Mr. Hopper. I'm going to do a quick review for uh, the Anatomy and Physiology Test 1, uh, just real fast. Uh, my goal with this is to provide you with a little extra information on what I would study if I were you. Now, first comment, I've received a lot of questions about study guide. This is what I have to say. You need to study the lectures and the PowerPoints that have come along with the lectures. That is the main material from which this exam will be pulled. Uh, the quizzes will help you to know what's important and what's not. This conversation will certainly help you know what's important and what's not. The study guide is not a bad tool to use, but it's certainly not something I would focus strongly upon. Uh, you, you, you need to study the PowerPoints. All right, that's, that's where the test is. Uh, if you can listen to this lecture and have a good grasp of what I'm talking about, then you're doing pretty darn well towards uh, being prepared for this class. Now, as I look down at the piece of paper in front of me with the material that I'd like to talk about, I have it numbered one through four down the left-hand side of the page, and just as I peek at it, it's pretty bottom heavy. All right, uh, the, the majority of the material is going to be lectures two, three, and four. There will be lecture one material on there, but if I were you, I would focus uh, further downstream. Okay, that's, that's where the majority of the work's gonna be. All right. You have to bear, bear with me a little bit. Uh, the material that I've written down, I kind of just scribbled stuff out as I was thinking through how I'm going to build up this exam. And my handwriting's terrible. And there's a chance we'll have to try to figure out what I've written. So <laughs> just bear with me and away we go. All right, chapter one. Chapter one. If I were you, I would have a good grasp of mucous membranes and where they're found. Uh, knowing that you have skin, which is cutaneous membranes. And uh, then serous membranes. And in the realm of serous membranes, I would know about uh, parietal versus visceral serous membranes. So parietal pericardium versus visceral pericardium. Parietal pleura versus visceral pleura, etc., etc. What does parietal mean? What does visceral mean in the realm of serous membranes? And what makes serous membranes special? Where would you find mucous membranes by comparison? All right. <clears throat> I would have a good grasp of homeostasis. Give me examples of things that your body keeps in what we call dynamic equilibrium in reference to homeostasis. Tell me what a negative feedback loop is. And give me examples of negative feedback loops. Uh, tell me what positive feedback is and tell me uh, an example or two of positive feedback. Be able to identify these if I give you examples. All right, this is important. Tell me about some of the body terms, the positional terms that we use. Um, lateral, medial, proximal, distal, superior, inferior. Uh, and in following that, tell me about the um, sectioning that we use to divide body parts up. So uh, sagittal sections, transverse sections, that sort of thing. Uh, just give me a good fit. Like if I describe body parts to you, be able to tell me kind of where they'd fit and how you'd view them. Speaking of how you'd view body parts, um, imaging techniques. There's a variety of imaging techniques that we discussed. So when would you use an x-ray? Right? Uh, when would you use a PET scan? What's an MRI? What's an fMRI? When are all of these handy? And what are the ups and downs of each one? Okay. Um, let's see. And, and as I kind of truck through this, you got to bear with me. I got a little bit of a, a little bit of a cold thing going. All right. <clears throat> Chapter two. If I were you, I would be able to tell me about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Tell me about atoms. Uh, which ones of the subatomic particles have mass? You know, what does a mass number count? Uh, what's a what's an uh, um, atomic number for that matter? Tell me about electrons and how they're special in terms of their charge compared to protons. How do electrons and what we refer to as valence shells? How does this relate to what we call reactivity? Right? You need to be able to walk me through all of that. I need to know a little bit about atoms. <clears throat> uh, also here, I believe we have all of the uh, organic molecules and the inorganic molecules. So I'm, I've just got this kind of written out as I, as I go. I'm just going to walk you through what I've got written out. Tell me about proteins. Uh, tell me about how they're built from amino acids uh, using uh, dehydration synthesis. So be able to walk me through dehydration synthesis versus uh, hydrolysis reactions. One is building things up. One is breaking things down. Uh, think about synthesis versus decomposition reactions. Uh, this is how this all fits together. So you're going to be able to walk me through it. Uh, and for that matter, 
all of those organic molecules to be able to tell me what their monomeric subunits are. But anyway, proteins are made of uh, amino acids. Now, the amino acids are bound together covalently. And again, recall that we use ribosomes to do this. So ribosomes are what bind together amino acids to make protein. But the idea here is, although these are covalent bonds, you need to grasp that we call them peptide bonds. Right? They're peptide bonds. Anytime you hear peptide or polypeptide, or what have you, you need to be thinking protein. Uh, tell me about nucleic acids and how this relates to the concepts of DNA and RNA. Like, what is a nucleic acid, the grand scheme? Tell me about the nucleotide base pairs. Okay, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, uh, uracil. Which ones are in DNA? Which ones are in RNA? For that matter, what's the difference between DNA and RNA? These are very, very important concepts. Okay, very important concepts. And I'm going to get into this later on, I predict. Uh, but in the realm of RNA, like in chapter 3, I think it is, uh, you need to be able to tell me the different types of RNA. In the realm of DNA, and again, this is probably chapter 3 stuff, but it's welcome to my brain, uh, you can pretty much guarantee I'll be asking you about some enzymes that are associated with DNA replication and probably asking you to um, walk me through uh, semi-conservative semi replication and what that means. So be able to kind of explain to me how that DNA strand splits and when you get two new strands out of uh, mitotic division you need to be able to tell me what's included where all right so what does it actually look like well that went down a little bit of a rabbit hole uh, let me get back on task here uh, lipids so tell me about the uh, various lipids that we studied so tell me about triglycerides and how they're put together like what are their parts and pieces and what's included Tell me about phospholipids and how phospholipids are different from triglycerides. Uh, tell me about uh, cholesterol and why cholesterol is important to you. You know, Explain the concept of a steroid or a steroid hormone and, and why they relate to cholesterol. <clears throat> and just while it's on my brain, explain to me why cholesterol is important to your cell membranes. Uh, your cell membranes play, a, or your cholesterol molecules rather, play a very important role for your cell membranes. You need to be familiar with that. It's a very important part of this class. Uh, let me see if I can get back on task. Oh, in, in reference to triglycerides, tell me about saturated versus unsaturated fats. Tell me what trans fats are. All right, this is important. All right, let me see if I can read my writing. All right, in reference to uh, inorganic molecules, tell me about water. I want to know all about it. I want to know all about why water is important to you. I want to know about hydrogen bonding and uh, what hydrogen bonding means for water molecules or even for proteins for that matter. As you recall, the um, unique shapes of proteins are held together via hydrogen bonds. So tell me about the unique properties of water. Tell me what that means to you. Um, let's see here. And I believe in this lecture, uh, we talked a little bit about active transport, transport versus passive transport. Uh, you need to be able to explain this to me. So what's the difference between active transport versus passive transport mechanisms? What does energy have to do with this? Uh, you know, tell me about how exocytosis works versus endocytosis. Tell me about how a protein pump functions. Like we, uh, we talked about sodium potassium pumps. Tell me how that works and, and, and what it does. Uh, tell me about diffusion versus osmosis and, and how that's passive transport and, and why that all kind of fits together. Tell me the importance of uh, pr the proteins that are that are cell membrane associated. So we talked about integral pro proteins and peripheral proteins. What's the difference between an integral protein and a peripheral protein? And how does that relate, one of these especially, uh, one of these especially, to um, uh, the, the ability of the cell to move things in and out of itself? All right. Uh, and I'm kind of already playing into lecture three here, but in reference to integral proteins and peripheral proteins, how does this play in with the cytoskeleton of your cells? You know, tell me about uh, the cellular modifications that, that involve um, peripheral proteins and parts of the cytoskeleton and providing strength for your cells. You know, tell me about gap junctions and desmosomes and all that fun stuff, right? The different parts of the cytoskeleton. All, if, if I'm being honest with you, you can guarantee I'll ask a little something about every organelle that we covered that's inside of your cells. All right, it's gonna happen. Like you need to know what your uh, ribosomes do. You need to know what your rough and smooth in the plasma reticulum are important for. You need to know about the Golgi. You know, th these mitochondria, 
you need to be friends with them. Okay, you need to be able to tell me why you have them, why they're important, and any unique traits that they display. <clears throat> All right, let me see if I can read down here, folks. All right, the endomembrane system. So in reference to uh, DNA replication and uh, protein synthesis. So you need to tell me about the endomembrane system specifically in regard to protein synthesis. Tell me about, talk to me about the different types of RNA. Use terms like transcription and translation. Tell me where they occur. Tell me what organelles are involved. Like I wanna know, man, you gotta explain this to me. I wanna know where things are done and how they're done. Uh, even any enzymes that are involved, you, you better be friends with it. Okay, you got to be friends with it. Uh, in regard to DNA replication, talking mitosis, uh, you need to be able to walk me through the cellular cellular life cycle. Like grasping the interphase is very important here. Uh, kind of knowing what happens in G1S and G2 phases of interphase. Uh, walking me through mitosis very generally. Okay, just a general understanding of kind of what's happening where. Uh, but specifically, you need to know about the base pairs that are involved in DNA versus RNA. Tell me who binds to who. Adding guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Which one binds to which? If I ask you to make a complementary strand, strand of DNA, show me which one it would be. If I ask you to make a complementary strand of RNA, you better be able to do it. All right, this is important stuff. <clears throat> All right, let's see, what else do I have here? I believe that's the extent of lecture three. Now on to, on to lecture four. So this is tissues. You need to have a good understanding of the major functions of these tissues. Okay, the major functions of these tissues. This is important. So why are, you gotta think about it like this. Why are they where they are? You know, uh, why, why do you find them where you find them? So why is, um, um, stratified squamous epithelium, why is that on your surface of your of your skin? You know, uh, Why is your bladder lined with transitional epithelium? Okay? Why is your esophagus lined with pseudostratified uh, uh, ciliated epithelium? And speaking of that, you better know about cilia. Okay? Uh, why is your, what else do we have here? Why are um, your alveoli of your lungs, why would they be lined with simple squamous epithelium? Uh, why would hyaline cartilage be more prevalent than elastic cartilage or fiber cartilage? What was it about hyaline cartilage that leads it to be all over the body? Like These are things you need to be able to answer. It's not just looking at it and saying, oh, that's what that is. It's, it's the why. You need to know why these things are where they are, why they do what they do. Why do you always find epithelial tissue associated with connective tissue? There is a reason for this, okay? Uh, epithelial tissue are avascular, right? They have to get their diffusion from an underlying tissues. It, this is important, okay? This falls into the realm of why epithelial uh, tissues are polar. They have a top and a bottom surface, and that bottom surface is attached to connective tissue. Like, these are things you need to be familiar with, okay? All right, let me see what I've got written down now. Uh, functions of tissues, the why, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me about the unique characteristics of epithelial tissue. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Uh, what do I have written down here? Where are various ones found? Tell me why they are there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tell me about the different types of muscle. So why would you have smooth muscle in some places, skeletal muscle in others, and cardiac muscle in others? What makes skeletal muscle special? What characteristics are there about skeletal muscle that separate it out, especially compared to cardiac muscle? What are some unique characteristics of cardiac muscle that are completely unlike the other two muscle types, all right? There are things about it that are totally different, unique features, right? You need to know about this stuff. You need to be able to explain it to me. You'll see it and have to identify it in lab, but you gotta tell me about it now, all right? Uh, let's see, what all do I have written down here? I've got a bunch of random facts. So, <clears throat> you need to be able to tell me about glandular epithelia, or, or glandular tissues is a better way to say this. So, endocrine glands versus exocrine glands. Um, how does this play into the concept of holocrine versus merocrine glands? Um, tell me about some of the glands that we talked about in the body. 
Like I talked about goblet cells, for example. Explain this to me. Why are these things? Where we find them? Um, tell me about nervous tissue. Tell me about what makes nervous tissue special. Tell me about the projections off of nervous tissue and what makes, what makes them special. Like, what's an axon? What's a dendrite? What do they do? Like, what are neuroglial cells and how do they play a role in this? Uh, let's see. And then the last thing I've got written down here is tell me about cilia versus flagella versus microvilli, which I've kind of already said, but I'll say it again. All right, so where would you find cilia? What do they do? Are they all modal or are some of them non modal? What are flagella? Where do you find them? What do they do? Why do you have microvilli in your intestinal tract? What are they there for? Are they moving things? No, they're not. They're serving other roles, right? So these are the types of questions that I'm, I would want you to understand for your exam. This is a wonderful breakdown. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of done. This is a wonderful breakdown. The most important bits of, these, uh, of this lecture set, I would say. These are the most important parts for your exam that I just went over. If you sort of have a good grasp of this, you'll be doing pretty well for the test. But I'm here to tell you, this is anatomy and physiology. It's a little tougher. The exam is more demanding. The questions are longer. They're more intense. So you need to be prepared. All right, so that's all I got for you. Um, you can expect the exam to be about 50 questions. It will be timed, and it will be on Honor Lock. So uh, you need to have Google Chrome available, and you need to have a nice quiet spot with a webcam. All right? So with that in mind, I uh, hope you guys do it outstandingly well. Nothing would make me happier. If you all do well, that would be great. Um, but I, I'm, I'm pulling for you. I'm pulling for you. Be prepared. The test will go live uh, typically on Sunday and close out on a Monday. So have a good day, have a good night, and enjoy your weekend. Thank you.